Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to explain the precautions to be taken while using a bridge and as well as another concept, important concept is a Q meter. <coughs> so what are the various precautions we need to take while we are measuring the bridge components like a capacitance and inductance especially. So these problems may occur maximum in AC bridges. They may not occur in DC bridge because the problem is due to the lead capacitance and lead inductance. You may know what do you mean by lead capacitance and lead inductance. So when we are taking any measurement across a resistance or across a capacitor and inductor, the contact leads which we are connecting across them provide some inductance. So that's why here there are some precautions we must be observed to obtain accurate readings. So the first one is the leads should be carefully laid out in such a way that no loops or long lengths and closing magnetic flux are produced with the consequent stay inductance errors. That means suppose if you are having very lengthy wire okay uh, here he is saying two points so one is no loops no loops and another one is long wires. <coughs> No loops is nothing but suppose the wire which is we are keeping in the bridge which we are using in the bridge suppose it is forming any loops like this so the loops may lead to an inductance value and if the wire is having so long instead of a small wire if the wire we are using to connect the internal internal components of the bridge if we are using a lengthy wire that com that gives some a uh, resistance capacitance and inductance value so every wire is having some internal resistance capacitance and inductance rlc components are definitely there in every component even our human body is also having some resistance okay so every company as every wire is having some resistance and capacitance and inductance we need to minimize or optimize the sizes of each and every component so that the resist unnecessary component we can reduce okay like stay capacitance we can simply say okay so no loops we should not uh, keep any loop or we should use very less uh, length of the wire then only we can uh, have a accurate and precise measurements and the next one is suppose if you are going with a measurement of inductance then the self capacitance of the leads is more important than their inductance so they should be spaced relatively apart suppose if you are having a wire like this if, if you are having another wire like this what do you mean by the definition of the capacitance what we can understand if two conducting plates separated by a dielectric medium are separated by a distance at a distance d okay this wire and this wire dash these two are conducting plates that's these two are conducting wires they can be acting as conducting plates separated by a dielectric medium or simply air gap is there okay that leads to a formation of capacitance because c is equal to epsilon a by d epsilon a by d this a wire is having some area and distance separated by a distance d and dielectric constant or whatever it is so c capacitance is formed that c is equal to epsilon a by d so with this type of self capacitance or inductance uh, wire lead capacitance so the L may be varied which we are going to measure. <clears throat> the similar effect is also there with the capacitance measurement. So when we are going for the capacitance measurement is also important to keep the lead capacitance as low as possible, very low as possible. If we don't concentrate on the lead capacitance, this lead capacitance will be added with our measurement uh, measured values so that our measured values will be different. Okay, what we are getting the original value will be different. Why we need to focus on the lead capacitance when we are going for the measurement of capacitance is usually the capacitor values are very low values, microfarads we are using. Okay, generally we are going for the 0.5 microfarad and 1 microfarad, 2 microfarads like that. So the lead capacitance is also having some capacitance. If it is added, that will definitely affect the value of the overall capacitance. If the capacitance value is more, then we don't have this problem. But as it is the less value, then we have this problem. Suppose in the case of, uh, uh, I, will exp I will give two examples here. <coughs> Resistance measurement, we have, we have taken two types of bridges 
for the uh, resistance measurement at DC bridges. One is Wheatstone's bridge. Wheatstone's bridge. Another one is Kelvin's bridge. Okay. In which of these two we have considered the lead resistance value in Kelvin's bridge? Can you say why? In Wheatstone's bridge, we have measured the resistance values in the order of kilo ohms. In the order of kilo ohms. And in the Kelvin's bridge, we have measured the resistance value in the order of 0 0.5 ohms. Very, very low values. And 0 0.005 ohms also we have measured. That means, in, as we are going for the low resistance value measurement, the lead resistance may affect the overall output resistance. But when we are going for this kilo ohms of resistance value, the lead resistance will not affect the kilo ohms. Suppose 100 kilo ohms is there. For this 100 kilo ohms, if I add 0 0.05 ohms, what is the difference? It doesn't mean any, it doesn't change the overall value. So that's why when we are going for the low value measurements, the lead capacitance or lead inductance or lead resistance we have to be considered. Okay, so that's why generally the wires which are providing the lead capacitance should not be nearer to each other. So it is very, for whenever we are going for the precise and accurate measurements, definitely these uh, encapsulations they should be there, shielded should be there, so that the bridge will be protected from any of the, these effects. Okay, suppose if any other bridge is there nearer to this bridge and this bridge and that bridge having the contacts, then there will be a problem. So encapsulation or some shielding should be required to get the accurate and precise measurements. So these are the common uh, precautionary measures we need to consider while we are going for the measurements using bridges. <coughs> Next important uh, concept is Q meter. Q meter is nothing but it is used to measure the quality of a coil or quality of the capacitor. It is used to measure the quality of a capacitor or quality of the inductor. So here we are taken a simple series resonance circuit. Uh, I will write here quality of coil and capacitor. So it is used to measure the quality of a coil and the capacitance and here we are using the principle that is called series resonance bridge. Series resonance resonance series resonance concept see here the capacitance is there this capacitance is in series with this cap inductance and resistance okay see here this is the original capacitor you may confuse this is the original capacitance and this is the original inductance and this is the original resistance what the circuit has the components Okay, whereas this CA is the additional uh, capacitance which is occurred from here to here, it's not a physical component, it's a shake capacitance. Now this circuit is operated with the oscillator, the oscillator oscillations are produced from 50 kHz to 50 MHz. These oscillations are applied across the resistance RSH. This RSH acts as a shunt resistance that gives the cap voltage gives the maximum amount of voltage to this circuit so that's why we are having this uh, 0 0.02 ohms it cannot limit the maximum of the current so as it is having low resistance value the maximum current flows through the circuit okay and we know the series resonance circuit or parallel resonance circuit works at the resonance condition <coughs> so what do you mean by resonance condition what do, you mean, what do you mean by resonance condition? So at that resonance condition, we are taking this Q meter. What is the amount of quality of the capacitance or inductance we can measure it through this Q meter. Uh, now see here, uh, as I said here, Q meter is either an instrument used to measure the efficiency of the coil and capacitance for RF applications. You have to remember this point. I told you already 50 kilohertz to 50 mega hedge, the frequency range of oscillations applied to this few meter are under 50 kilo hedge to 50 mega hedge. So which frequency range it is? <coughs> it is definitely RF range. Okay. So Q meter is based on the principle of series resonance. The voltage drop across the coil or capacitor is Q times the applied voltage. So what is the voltage across the coil? Suppose across the coil voltage 
EG is equal to R across the inductance the voltage EL is equal to Q times the applied voltage E. Let us consider E is the applied voltage oscillations that are coming from the input voltage source. So for this E the resultant voltage across the coil or resultant voltage across the inductance is equal to Q into E. This is the condition we have taken. Okay, now what happens at the condition of resonance? We know very well what happens at the condition of resonance, whether it is a series resonance or parallel resonance, there is a common term that the resonance, the reactance is equal to resistance. Entire reactance of the circuit is equal to resist, uh, capacitive reactance is equal to inductive reactance. <coughs> and uh, Q is the ratio of so q is the ratio of q is equal to reactance by resistance xl by xc so at resonance i told you already at resonance xl is equal to xc that means inductive reactance inductive reactance is equal to is equal to capacitive reactance capacitive reactance now at this condition what happens the voltage across the inductance voltage across the inductance coil <laughs> voltage across the coil el is equal to i into xl el is equal to i into xl normal v is equal to ir how you are writing v is equal to ir okay we know v is equal to ir here v plus we are having the applied voltage e electric field applied voltage e into i is common i is the current flowing through this series resonance circuit where r l c are in series into xl xl is nothing but reactance of the inductance reactance of the inductance and this uh, same case same is the case with this inductance uh, capacitance also so e c is equal to i into xc capacitive reactance so at this resonance condition bridge comes into the balanced condition such that the reactance is equal reactance becomes equal at that condition we are going to measure this quality of the inductance and as well as quality of the capacitor whichever we need okay so q, q factor this is about q factor and precautionary measures we need to consider when we are going for the measurement of bridges thank you